tree where we learn how to do just about everything. So we've all been there before, out in the wild looking for some herbs to poison a tribe of orcs. Or perhaps on the hunt for some king's foil because one of our companions had been stuck with a morgul blade. Man, if I had a nickel for every time that happened. Problem is, your fancy ass adventuring pants, they don't have any pockets and your pack is full. That's where this handy dandy mofo comes in. I almost missed that. <laughs> this compact little bag of awesome is what I like to call a ranger's pouch. Not only is it gorgeous to look upon and fit snugly on a belt, but check this out. It opens up to be a big ass wax canvas pouch. Not only that, but it cinches. And when not in use, it easily just folds right back away and sits on your belt. This is compact, useful, waterproof. Let's get right into making this thing and level up this skill. Okay, so the canvas I'm using to make this thing is actually taken from this drop cloth that I bought from Home Depot. I think it was only like 30 bucks for the whole thing and it gives me just a boatload of fabric. That said, if you do want to follow along and wax some canvas for either this or other projects, make sure you have one that has a really tight weave if you hold it up to the light and there's like a lot of holes in it or you can see light coming through, you're probably gonna wanna pass on it. Okay, so for starters, we need to cut the panels to make this bag. Now this drop cloth has these finished edges here, but they're kinda too bulky and I think they're gonna make like weird lumps and stuff in my bag. So I'm just gonna cut those suckers out all together and give myself straight edges to work with. First though, I double layer that tarp so that as I make my cuts, I'm getting both panels at the same time. And to keep everything lined up, I just lock both of them in place with some pins. With that, I start trimming off those bulky edges first. Then I go back in and I cut my cloth at a measurement of 12 inches by 11 inches. And just so you know, once we're done sewing this sack up, it's gonna be about a quarter of an inch thinner and about two inches shorter. So just bear that in mind as you're figuring out yours. With this all cut, it gives me the two pieces of fabric that I'll be working with to actually make my back. All right, cool. Let's get to making this canvas into some wax canvas. Doing this is not only gonna make it more rugged, but it's also gonna make it waterproof. Now the wax I'm using is going to be a mixture between this paraffin wax that I got from Michaels and these little beads o bees wax I just so happen to have lying around in this party cup here. Because everybody should have a party cup of beeswax kicking around. Now if you look online, there's a bunch of different recipes to make the wax actually make wax canvas. I think like Greenland wax is 90% paraffin and 10% beeswax. For this mixture though, I'm just going for a straight up 50-50 mix by weight. First though, I had to break down this paraffin wax just so it would melt more easily. Then I added my wax to a heat safe container and threw it all in ye olde double boiler to get it melted. The wax is highly flammable and you don't want to put it directly like in a pan over a fire. So using a double boiler is really kind of the safest method to get this done. And while that heats, it's a good time to prepare your canvas. To do this, I just laid down a towel to help catch whatever wax seeps through and laid my canvas one on top of the other. By layering them that way, any of the wax that seeps through the top canvas is going to get absorbed by that bottom canvas so you don't have any waste. After about 30 minutes, my wax is all melty and ready to be used. First though, I hit my canvas with an iron just to warm everything up. This not only is gonna open those fibers up and help it accept the wax a little bit better, but it's also going to heat up that fabric so that the wax doesn't solidify as soon as it touches it. Though if it does start to solidify, it's not a big deal. I'll show you what to do after. Once that's all warmed up, I just use a regular old paintbrush and slather on the wax. There's really no method to this madness. You just wanna saturate your canvas and make sure all of the surface is completely covered. And again, don't worry if you start to see buildup. We're gonna fix that later. Now, as you can see, some of the wax did make it through that first layer, but it was caught by the second one. So yay for efficiency. Flipping everything over, we just repeat the exact same thing, completely covering the second piece of fabric. And just to make sure I got everything, I took both of them apart and added just a little bit more wax wherever it looked like it didn't take all the way through. Okay, so if you didn't heat up the fabric, or at this point as it starts to cool, you're gonna start to see some like ugly white patches where the wax was especially thick and it started to cool off. All you have to do to get rid of this is actually hit the whole thing with an iron. This remelts that wax and helps to evenly distribute it all over the piece of fabric. All right, from here, you really should wait between 24 and 48 hours to let that wax harden all the way. Otherwise, it's just gonna be kind of tacky as you work. When it does harden though, it leaves you with this really nice stiff fabric that's waterproof and gives this cool crinkle pattern whenever it's been crushed. So heads up, if you do find you don't like that crinkle pattern, you can actually iron it out. It'll just remelt the wax and start from scratch again. Really cool stuff, actually. 
All right, so now that we have our canvas prepped, we can go ahead and put this bag together. I start by lying the two panels on top of each other and clipping together three out of the four corners. Notice that I left the top here open. We want this bag to be able to cinch, so we're gonna end up making a little channel out of folded fabric. As such, we really need to make sure we don't sew up where those edges are gonna fold over. That being said, we also don't wanna leave those areas with just raw fabric, because it's gonna end up, you know, shedding threads as you go. To get around that, I start by marking it about an inch and a half down from the top on all sides. Then I start a fold around a quarter of an inch at the top, and continue it down to nothing a little bit past my inch and a half mark. This is gonna end up giving us a nice folded edge through this hole where our string passes through to cinch the back. All right, now at that inch and a half mark, I also put a pin just to help remind me where to start my sewing. And I do this folding and pinning each of the four corners all along the top. All right, so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna start sewing at the pins on one side, then work our way around all three edges until we reach the pins on the other side. And to do this, I busted up my new handy dandy leather sewing machine. I got this thing very recently and set it up and I've just been desperate to try to play with it. Now it is rugged and rough and can totally handle everything I threw at it with this project, but if you're using like a Singer at home sewing machine or whatever, you might want to wait to wax the canvas until after you've sewn it together. Just because I've read that some of the wax from the canvas can get into the workings of your sewing machine and kind of gum everything up. Now as you can see, I'm very new to this sewing machine, so I started off painfully slowly but managed to get up to speed as I got comfortable and sewed around these three edges. And with those sides all sewn up, we have ourselves a handy dandy little sack here. And though not great, my sewing job isn't terrible either. I'm gonna call it middling. I have a little bit of trouble with that sewing machine kind of maintaining what straight is. It tends to have a very different idea than I do. Anyways, having left those top corners open, we can now start to make our channels that those cinch strings are gonna go through. To do this, I start by first folding the top half of an inch so that I have a nice finished edge to work with. Then I fold another inch worth of fabric down. By sewing about an eighth of an inch along this bottom edge here, I can make a hollow space for my cinch string to go through. After doing this on the other side as well, it was off to my sewing machine to lock those into place. And as you can see, those folded over corners from the beginning give us that really nice finished look and leave us with these tiny tunnels we can use all along the top. From here, all we have to do is turn the whole thing inside out to admire our handiwork. And I'm super happy with how clean these edges came out. And though my top seam isn't beautiful, it, it, I mean, it'll do the trick. I'm not going for any awards here. I just want this thing to work. Okay, so with those little channels done, we can go ahead and send some string through to see if our cinch is gonna work. Now for my string, I'm gonna be using some of this hemp twine just because it's rugged and it's also a really fantastic fire starter, which I think if you're just a ranger in the woods, it's a great thing to have at hand at any point in time. In fact, this thing being like a giant piece of wax canvas, I think the whole thing is kind of a, a fire starter. I wouldn't stand too close to my campfire. Let's put it that way. All right, so to get my string through those little channels there, I'm just gonna use this piece of wire with a little hook on it. Basically, all I do is tie my string just under the hook of that wire and then push that wire through one of the channels. This way, I can pull the string right out of the other side. Then using my piece of wire like a giant needle, I just send it through the next channel as well. Once it's pulled out of the other side there, I'll send it through one more time. Basically, you wanna make a complete loop out of your cordage. By doing this, it's gonna make it so that when I pull on either side, the bag will actually cinch itself close. And with that, we officially have like a working sack. Like by itself, it's a little cinch sack. You can throw that sucker over your shoulder or toss it in your bag or whatever. But what are you? You're not just some fly-by-night ranger. You, sir, are a strider. You're, you're top of the mark when it comes to rangers. And so you deserve the best. I feel like an infomercial geared specifically to rangers. That should be a thing that happens. Forage sack. Anyways, as you can see, to make this more functional and convenient, I really wanted to have something that kind of kept it into this nice little tight container that you can wear on your, on your belt loop or something. And to do that, and because it's the thing I like working with the most, I decided to wrap the whole thing in leather. Now, I just so happened to have this piece of scrap leather that had a cut almost exactly the width I needed. So I just finished the cut and decided to use that. To get my sizing right, I just folded it around the folded up canvas sack and marked off where I wanted it to end. 
This way, it's gonna wrap around tight enough to keep everything nice and snug and as flat as I can get it. Now, to pretty it all up, I also rounded off all of my edges. So this thing has actually three pieces of leather total that make the whole thing up. That main part that I just cut makes up the whole body of it. Then there's this smaller bit in the back here that makes up the belt loop. To size it, I just made sure it fit right along the whole back area of everything once it was folded up. I also cut this little piece here that matches the top shape of that belt loop. So basically, I'm going to be sewing this piece of leather onto the sack, but because it is just kind of a thin canvas, I didn't want to rely on it to support all of the tension that uh, this hanging on it would have. So that piece sits inside the bag and is actually what accepts kind of the threads from the outside of the bag. So it's just kind of leather pulling on leather rather than it pulling on the canvas. It'll make more sense as I go, I promise. Finally, I also cut these little tabs here just for the ends of my cinch string. Cause I thought they were cute. Look at them go. All right, from there I did the usual leather thing of just kind of beveling all my edges and using the slicker brush just to make sure everything had a nice finished look to it. I also decided to wet down my leather so that I could use my little skill tree stamp that I 3D printed. This way when your fellow rangers are like, that's dope, who made that? You can be like, skill tree did. Then I just went ahead and dyed everything a nice light brown, sealed it with some resist, and added some antiquing just to help my little tree stand out more. All right, with that, all of the parts are ready to go. It's time to put it together to make this handy dandy little pouch here. I started by punching the four holes in the corner of my little belt loop piece. Then wrapping my main piece of leather around the folded sack and making sure it was exactly where I wanted it to land, I lined up the back panel and marked off all of my holes, which I then punched to help prepare for ribbons. Now again, because one set of those rivets are actually gonna go through the bag as well, I marked off and punched off an additional set of holes into that little leather support piece that I had cut earlier. All right, and with those ready to go, I just locked the belt loop into place using the bottom most holes to drop in some rapid rivets. The other holes, I wanted to line up so that they are just underneath the top seam of the sack. Once those are all marked out, I just used an awl to punch the holes through the canvas. Now I can use my little leather brace piece here to help hold those rivets into place so that they don't risk pulling through the bag and stretching out the fabric. That being said, the, the pressure is still very much on the fabric. I mean, if you pull kind of down, um, it, it's just being held on by some rivets, and I'm still afraid it's going to rip. And that's where most of the weight's gonna be, right? You're gonna fill your pouch and it's gonna be pulled down. So to help with that, I decided to throw in some stitches here just in case. And that really helps spread out that force. So it's not just on these two rivet lines, but it's going along this whole piece in between the pieces of like leather and fabric. Now it's nice and strong. I can rely on that. And as you can see, it also left me with this nifty little belt loop here. And again, just for flair, I added those little tags to the end of my string here. Okay, so to wrap this project up, I just need to put some closures on it so that everything stays together. Ha, <laughs> get it? To wrap this up, it literally wraps up. To facilitate that, I just punched two holes in the corners of the front-facing leather panel here so that it can accept two snaps. Then I folded everything up so that I could mark where the snaps will land on the bottom part of the leather. Then I punched those holes as well and set all of my snaps into place. Now this whole thing holds together in a slick little package. And I really dig how nicely this fits on my belt. Like because it's this little flat channel instead of kind of a rounded loop, it fits super snug and doesn't like shift or move around at all. It looks good, it's really low profile, and it stays in place and mostly just kind of out of the way. Then if I need to gather materials, the whole thing unfolds giving me this large, super useful pouch. Something I can say, put everything I find on my table in. Then should I need to run from orcs, I can just cinch the whole thing together to hold everything in place. And of course, when done, it all just folds neatly away again. And like, seriously, this is good for practical use. If you find yourself in the woods gathering kindling a lot or just kind of nice little findings, like this is a great thing to have around. And of course, if you're somebody who LARPs or cosplays or whatever, like traditional pants that you use for that don't have pockets. So something like this, kind of great to have. So yeah, whether you're gathering medicinal herbs or pelts or need a thalus to slow the poison from a mogul blade, this little bad boy here got you covered. I hope you liked this episode. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, if there's any skills you'd like to see me cover, why don't you leave it down in the comments section and I'll add it to the list here. Thank you all for watching. I must go and find some kindling now for the night is cold and full of time. In the meantime though, keep leveling up, you.
you made it to the end screen. That's actually a really great way to help support this channel. Another great way to help support this channel is doing what these amazing people did and joining our Patreon. This whole episode, and honestly, this channel only exists because of these amazing people. If you want to join their noble ranks, check out the link in the description below. Also, you know, wouldn't hurt if you clicked one of these videos down here. Just saying.